All right, we got something really exciting for you guys. We're going to be unboxing the brand new ShotScope V3. That is the third iteration iteration in the ShotScope system. So going back to the V1, the V2, which we've now been using for two years, and the V3. And what I like about the V3 from what we've seen in some of the specs is it looks like ShotScope has went, gone, gone ahead and taken the list of things that the users asked for and put them right into the new design. So the new V3 is gonna have a number of features, but I think the biggest one that people are excited about, Mike, has gotta be the size. It's gotta be the size, because as you'll see, it is a lot smaller than the old one. It is smaller, it is lighter. And I again, going back to the, uh, the old V2, never really, had much of a complaint as far as the weight goes. It nope. never really affected me. It's a, it's a fairly light unit at only 61 grams, but uh, it is on the bigger side, you know? So if you're wearing a glove or a long sleeve or something like that, that is something that we've heard people mention. Uh, there's also quite a few uh, advancements that have come in from a technological standpoint. So smaller package with a lot more packed into it, but let's not wait any longer. Let's get this thing unboxed. What do you say? Yeah, let's take a look at what's boy. Look, but look at even the size comparison the packaging of the packaging. The V2 yeah. and the V3. And uh, let's just see what this little, like you said, smaller box, smaller but box. a more powerful it's device. Just, so let's get that thing open. Let's see what we got. Let's do it. I don't want to rip it open like a caveman, you know? <laughs> Wow, immediately, look at that. Really, really, really sleek. Simple, sleek packaging. While you're getting that, I'm gonna take a look here on the outside of the box. Uh, looks like the key features that they're gonna highlight, of course, are the, the automatic shot trap tracking, which we are familiar with with the V2. Uh, 100 statistics on your game, conforms to the rules of golf, which is important. But big things here are gonna be the color screen. The V2 lacked the color screen, so that's gonna be big. Um, let's do a, a little comparison there. Take a look at the size difference right off the, out the bat. Not only from face on, but even looking at from the side, you can see the thickness. So that was one thing that, for me, if anything, if any complaint would be how it protruded a little bit above the wrist on the V2. So the V3 is much, I'm seeing right now, much thinner design. In fact, I'm wearing an Apple Watch right it's now. It's very close to an Apple Watch. I would say, yeah, very, very close in size there. On the face size, as right. well as, uh, the thickness, the overall thickness of the uh, of the V3. So, what else comes in that? Let's box, see what else right? comes in here. So we've got a charger in here. Let's pop that open and see. So they they, they put a new unique uh, clip charger in here, which is really simple to use. Basically, it just clips right on the back of the unit, which is different than the V2. So here's your clip. We just clip it right in there. We're good. So you got a nice secure connection there. Mm -hmm. USB on the other side, so you can use all of your USB chargers. Um, so that's nice to see, very simple charging solution. Speaking of charging, what I could say is one big thing that's gonna jump out for people when you see the V2 versus the V3 is gonna be that overall battery life. So um, according to ShotScope, and we have not had time to really put it through its paces yet, we will. So stay tuned for more of that. I'm sure we're gonna to get to run this thing for its full battery life. But according to ShotScope, the V2 had a battery life of about six hours, which I would say is pretty much spot on. Going back to mm -hmm. the Scotland series when we played and we were over there, we were doing 36 a day. Right. Uh, you know, if you're averaging three and a half, four hours around, we would find that often we would get close on 36. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of times we were just hooking it up to an external battery, just charging, and charging it in between yeah. rounds. But the V3 now is going to have a charge life of 10 plus hours. So there's your two rounds right there. So there's your rounds, exactly. For your 36 it might troopers. even last you an Iron Man or two. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so let's see what else we got in 10 here. hours plus. So what else we got in the, uh, the so box? Of course you got the nubs. And I like that they're just condensed in this little box right here. So they give you 16, they give you a couple of extras. So these are your tracking tags. So if you are familiar with, or if you're a user of the V1 or V2 system, you're very familiar with these tags. They look incredibly similar to the second version, the V2. Uh, but if you're new to the system, the way this works is these tags have an, have an RFID 
uh, some sort of tagging device in them. They screw onto the end of each club. They give you 16, so you do have two extra in case you lose one, or if you've got another club that you're alternating in out of the bag. Uh, but what's gonna happen is these are actually going to talk to the watch itself. The good thing is, and this is something they had in the V2, all of the GPS and the processing and, the, and everything like that is done in the watch, so it's not relying on a cell phone. There are some systems out there where it's a Bluetooth connection in the processing, the mm -hmm. actual brains is the cell phone. This is all within the watch. Uh, so here what you're having is these tags are passive, meaning they don't have batteries, they don't need to be charged, they will last you, you know, as long as you need them to last you. But what they do is they have those little RFID tags in them, the watch identifies which tag is on which club, so it knows what club you're hitting. So if you're new to the system, that's the benefit of the stat tracking. It's a hands-off system. There's, there's no interaction when you're out there on the golf course. You go out, you play your normal game with the watch on your wrist, the tags on your, your clubs, and the watch does the thinking. It knows, it detects a swing based on that gyroscopic gyroscopic motion, mm -hmm. and then it knows which tag, so it knows what club you hit, and then it drops a GPS pin, and then you'll work your way around your round, and then it'll track each and every shot, and it knows which one. So that's how it's calculating all of your statistics, you know, pin proximity, things like that. Some things that haven't changed in the new V3 is things like the pin collect. Yep. Uh, I also like that it is, this will feel very familiar for uh, v, uh, V2 users, is the, the four buttons, actually it's been reduced. There was five buttons on the side of the V2 uh, and now we're down to four buttons. But a lot of that interaction will be the same, like the number of putts and stuff like that. So if you're, you'll be, it's a very seamless transition if you are coming from the V2 to the V3. Otherwise, if you're brand new to ShotScope, you're gonna get a very, uh, like I said, intuitive and seamless system. Yeah, definitely. And I wanna weigh these bad boys. Yeah, let's get them on the scale and see, uh, see the real weight difference. Yep, curious. All right, so you can see that the V3 comes in at 61 grams. Again, not a heavy device by any means. Um, but still, there is some some room to uh, to drop some weight there, like all of us after uh, quarantine, <laughs> right? right? And uh, with the V3, we're seeing that come in at 40, 40 grams. grams. So as a comparison, once again, and it, it's gonna depend, of course, on the strap that you're using, because a lot of aftermarket straps for the Apple Watch, but the Apple Watch I weighed came in at 49 grams. So it's actually nine grams lighter than an Apple Watch. And I think that to me, more than the physical size, mm -hmm. the bulk, was the weight. As a golfer, if I'm swinging, I want something that's right. really light on my arm, it almost feels like it's not there. Um, the strap, too, one thing that I'll point out, they've got a very similar, as far as the fit goes and a look to the V2, the strap is gonna have multiple, multiple spots there so you can get just the right tightness because again, you don't want something loose moving around on your arm. But the big change, the big advancement is now in the V3, the strap is gonna be removable it's gonna be interchangeable. So it's gonna come out the gate, the V3 is coming with five different colors, uh, and then they had even talked about possibly additional colors That's in the cool. future. We had had Gavin uh, on the podcast and he talked about more colors coming. Um, so you'll be able to change that. Again, with that idea of trying to reduce the overall size while increasing the performance, when you see the statistics, you realize that the V3 has the dual GPS accuracy. Mm -hmm, that's right. Uh, whereas the, that's not a feature of the V2. And the, one of the ways they achieved that by, was by making the band itself the antenna. So that, that's not, like I said, it's not just a, a, a piece of rubber there. Inside the band itself is going to be the antenna for a, a better GPS uh, signal and better GPS um, accuracy. Other differences, Mike? I mean, what everybody wanted, a color screen. Loving the color screen. Color screen, very easy to see out there in daylight and things like that. Again, you just it's impressive the, the weight that they shaved out of it. Of yeah. products. Even though but it was like I said, a light feeling technology. thing. Mm -hmm. um, another thing, a lot of people like to use their golf GPS watch as their everyday watch. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna be a new feature in the V3 as well. They're gonna have an everyday watch mode. Um, depending on where you were at in the V2, the V1, V2, you may have had it where you had to load the, the courses before you play, which is a fairly simple process, but you would go into the app, download the course, and then via Bluetooth connect and upload it to your watch. Those, those days are gone, but the Eliminated a step. Yes. I love it. So there's gonna, the, the V3 is gonna come preloaded with 35 
thousand uh, preloaded courses. So that's going to be in there. Um, also, very seamless transit. You know, move from from one to the other. So. Take us through it, Mike. You, um, you, when you set up the new V3 in your app, mm -hmm. what, what's the process? There? Simple. And coming from me, someone I don't like the tech stuff. I just want it to be easy. I want it to work. And that's exactly what this was. So basically, you would open the app. You would lay your phone down right next to it. You just hit connect the band right on the app, and then it's going to update the firmware right there on the spot. It's a one-shot deal. Right after that, you're in the app now. Now you're part of the shot scope system. You throw the nub, the, the, the tags on the back, I call them nubs, you throw them tags on the back of the clubs, and then you're all set. And one thing that I like, and again, a thing that's been kept consistent here, is that that app and those stats are all free. There is no additional subscription, it's not a trial period, and then after a certain amount of time, you have to start paying to keep your stats. It's 100% free. If you are coming from the V2 to the V3, you're, you're not gonna have to change anything in your app with regards to stats. It's just gonna kind of pick up where you That's left it. off. Mm -hmm. So it's just a new band collecting stats in the same pool of stats, if that makes sense. Makes sense. So <laughs> it, it, it's just a very seamless transition. In fact, you theoretically could use the same tags that you had in the V2 uh, with the V3 watch. Um, however, they advise there are some improvements in the RFID in the new V3, so use these tags. But if you've got the V2, I would almost save the other tags as a backup. That's a good point. Like, yeah. I mean, why not? Um, but again, other things you're going to get out of this watch is you're going to get your GPS when you're out there on the course, front, back, middle, as well as to all your hazards. Again, stuff that we're used to seeing from a V2, but that's right. all going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, you, like I said, you're going to have that automatic club sense, so you're not going to have to tag it or tell in any way interact with the system to tell it what club you're hitting. It's all going to be done hands off while you're out there. Um, so uh, anything else I mean, that that's kind of jumps out at you, Mike? No, man, I love it. I love the way it looks. Again, love the way it feels. Love all the stuff you rattled off. Um, and everyday watch mode. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. I'm gonna rock it. I, mean, I don't have an Apple Watch. It's, it's, it'll it's, be okay. my Apple Watch. <laughs> there you go. It's, a, it's, it's, again, like I said, color screen. You're gonna get your distances to hazards. You're gonna get all that type of stuff. Yes. So it's an improvement. And then, um, do you remember the price point? It's, uh, the launch offer was $179.99. On the V3. On the V3. Yep. So, again, it's one of those things. Uh, a big question we're going to get is if I'm a current V2 user, do I make the switch? And I think that's going to come down to a little bit of a personal preference. Of course, you're going to have that better performance to talk about with the GPS and things like that. I would say if you feel in any way that the V2 was limiting you because you felt the size, the bulk, or even from an aesthetic standpoint, you wanted to change it up with some of the new cool colors. Um, I think that that price point is not something that's so prohibitive that you couldn't make that change. Um, I think if you're looking, if to get into the system brand new, um, I think you go right for the V3. Absolutely. Uh, I, I personally just think it's it's just a, uh, it's a, it's a unit that's going to last you quite a while. Um, and it's priced well below many other GPS watches that don't even offer stat tracking. Right. So. Right. What color band did you like the best? I like the red one, but um, we got a couple of blacks. But yeah. I'll take the black. It's there good. you go. I like the black. I like the gray. I think the gray, gray is nice. Really great. Yeah. And look, again, wrapping it kind of up, I, I think what I like to see with this is it, it very much feels like what ShotScope did was they took the exact feedback that they were getting and addressed them one by one. The size being one of the big ones, a lot of people had said that the bulk of the V2 was what was what was kind of inhibiting them from using it on the course. So that was addressed. The color screen, the watch. Oh, and one more. A lot of us, at least here in the States, wanted that 12 hour clock. We wanted the 12 hour clock. And it's in there. All right, no more uh, 1808. <laughs> and I gotta think to myself. Exactly. <laughs> so you can, you do have the option to set a 12 hour clock on the new V3 and you can't, this way, you, unfortunately though, you, you can't tell your wife you were late, you know, getting That's back true. from the round because you couldn't tell the yeah, time. Yeah, couldn't tell the time. Yeah. No, that, that, yeah. that excuse is out there. Although that excuse never really held much no, water no, anyway. Mm, no. no. But, uh, but anyway, like I said, got a 12 hour clock, so lots of good changes. Um, excited to get beyond this first look and really get it out there on the golf course and start to really use it. Uh, and of course, we'll continue to give you guys feedback, so make sure you guys follow along with that and we'll, we'll get more information to you as we get out there and start using it. But on a first look, first sight, 
Excited to see what they've done here. Excited to see the size of it. Excited to see the increases in battery life, the increases in accuracy, and that aesthetic piece that's offered with the different bands and the different collar straps. So I think this they've checked a lot of boxes with this V3, um, and I'm really excited to see it out there. I think it's going to be one of the hottest I golf agree with that. tech items on the market yep. for the next year, for I sure. Agree. I agree. All right, let us know your thoughts. Drop them in a comment below. We'll see you guys soon. Ha, ha, ha.